So in this video we're going to learn about implicit differentiation. So we're going to learn how to differentiate a function y with respect to x where y isn't explicitly written in terms of x. So we'll see, see what that looks like. So here we go. Before we can do that, I need to make sure you remember what chain rule tells us to do when we differentiate a function. And <clears throat> I'm going to do this one in Leibniz notation and use a let statement just uh, to make sure we know what's going on here. So let's say we want to differentiate the function 5 plus 2x to the power of 10. So we'd have to do chain rule for this. And one way we could use chain rule is by using a let statement. Let's say let u equal 5 plus 2x. So if I let the base of the power be u, I would just have the function u to the power of 10. And this function would be very easy to differentiate uh, in terms of u. Like, it would be very easy for this function if I wanted to differentiate y with respect to u. If I wanted to differentiate y with respect to u, that would just become, so if I wanted to do dy du, I'll do this off to the side, derivative of y with respect to u, that would just be 10u to the 9. But I don't just want dy du. I actually want dy dx for this function. I actually want to figure out what is the derivative of y with respect to x. But right now it's written in terms of u. So what I could do, I could find the derivative of y with respect to u and then multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. And notice how that actually equals dy dx, right? That actually equals, if these will cancel out, it actually equals dy over dx. So I can differentiate y with respect to u and then multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x and then I have my answer. So I've already done part of this. I already know what dy du is. The derivative of y with respect to u is 10 u to the power of 9. But this needs to be multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. Well, here's function u. So if I want the derivative of u with respect to x, well, that's also easy to differentiate, right? Just differentiate this function. Derivative of 5 is 0. The derivative of 2x is 2. So I just need to multiply this by 2. And then what I have is 20u to the 9. Use your let statement to replace u, right? We want to write this in terms of x. Derivative of y with respect to x. So our final answer needs to have the x back in it. So remember, u is actually equal to 5 plus 2x. Replace this u with our let statement. 5 plus 2x to the power of 9. So basically, let me just summarize really quickly. If I want to differentiate y with respect to x, I could differentiate y with respect to anything as long as I then multiply that by the derivative of that anything with respect to x. And then those cancel out, and we end up with dy over dx. So we're going to use this knowledge to actually be able to differentiate a function y with respect to x that's not actually written uh, with y isolated already. It's not explicitly written in terms of x. Uh, so for each of these following examples, keep in mind we are looking for dy over dx. We're looking to write the derivative of y with respect to x. So like this, this isn't written explicitly in terms of y, right? The y is not isolated by itself. So instead of rearranging this function to isolate for y, we could instead, um, we could instead differentiate this implicitly. We can leave it exactly as it is. Just make sure each of the terms we do we're differentiating with respect to x. So if I want to differentiate the function x squared in terms of x. That's, I'll do that on the line after this, so I'm going to do that. I also want to differentiate the function y squared with respect to x, but we're going to do that in a bit of a tricky way, just like we did with chain rule in the previous example. If I want to differentiate with this respect to y, that would be easy. I could differentiate this function y squared with respect to y very easily. It would just be 2y. But I actually want to differentiate it with respect to x. So in order for that to happen, I then need to multiply this by the derivative of y with respect to x. And notice if I do that, what happens is those cancel, and what I end up with is the derivative of y squared with respect to x, and that's what I want. So we're just doing it in a little bit of a tricky way using chain rule. And that will all equal the derivative of 16 with respect to x. So the derivative of 16 with respect to x. So let's actually, each, actually do each of these differentiations. 
So the derivative of x squared with respect to x, just use your power rule, that's 2x. Plus the derivative, so I want the derivative of y squared with respect to x, but I'm going to do that in a tricky way by doing it with respect to y first and then multiplying the derivative uh, of y with respect to x after. So let's do the derivative of y squared with respect to y, and that would just be 2y. And then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x, which is actually what we want. We want the derivative of y with respect to x. So we've created that term. We're just going to have to isolate that term after. And the derivative of 16 with respect to x is 0. So now we just have to go ahead and isolate dy over dx, because that's what we're looking for. So move the 2x over. So 2y dy over dx equals negative 2x. Divide the 2y over. And then we have our derivative of y with respect to x isolated. We've got negative 2x over 2y. That's just negative x over y. So we differentiated the function where, where x wasn't written, uh, where y wasn't written explicitly in terms of x, right? The y was mixed into the equation, not isolated. And then we found the derivative and isolated after. So let's try another example. So this one, uh, if I want to differentiate this with respect to x, I'm going to, since the y isn't written explicitly in terms of x, we could use implicit differentiation. So we could differentiate this y squared, the derivative with, the, sorry, the derivative with, I could differentiate y squared with respect to y first, but I actually want it differentiated in terms of x, so that would have to be multiplied by dy over dx after, which instead of writing that each time, we could just write, write dy over dx, another notation for that would be y prime, plus differentiate x cubed with respect to x, that's easy to do, minus, we want the derivative of y cubed with respect to x, but that's difficult to do, so we'll do it with respect to y first. But then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x, so that those dy's cancel and we get the derivative of this with respect to x. And so instead of writing dy over dx, I'll just write y prime this time. Plus the derivative with respect to x of 6, that's easy to do. And then we want uh, the derivative of 3y uh, with respect to x, but I'll do it with respect to y first. So the derivative with respect to y of 3y, and then that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x, and multiply it by y prime. Okay, let's go ahead and do these derivatives and do a bit of simplification. So the derivative of y squared with respect to y, well that's 2y, and then I've still got this y prime, plus the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared, minus the derivative of y cubed with respect to y, that's 3y squared, and I still have this y prime here, plus the derivative of 6 with respect to x, that's just 0, so I don't need to write plus 0. And here I need to do the derivative with respect to y of 3y, so that's just 3, and then I still have that y prime beside it. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to somehow isolate y prime. So I'm going to get all of those on the same side of the equation and then common factor it. So I'll leave the 2y y prime because that has a y prime. I'll leave the minus 3y squared y prime because that has a y prime. And I'll bring over the 3y prime becomes minus 3y prime. And on the other side of the equation, just move this 3x squared over becomes negative 3x squared. And then we can common factor the y prime from all three of those terms, and I get 2y minus 3y squared. Oh, whoops, I forgot to write, do, do, do. Oh, I wrote squared instead of prime there. There we go. Fixed. When I moved that over, I wrote squared instead of prime by accident. Okay, so that's fixed. And do, 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 so minus 3 equals <coughs> negative 3x squared. Isolate the y prime. Just divide that factor over. So it'll be 2y minus 3y squared minus 3. There we go. There's my derivative of y with respect to x using implicit differentiation. Let's try, <coughs> let's try one last one. 
So differentiate this with respect to x, but y isn't written explicitly in terms of x, so we'll use implicit differentiation. I'll show less steps for this one, so I just need to differentiate 5x cubed with respect to x, so that's 15x squared equals, okay, I need product rule for this. I have negative 3x times y, so I'd have to do the derivative of negative 3x, that's negative 3 times y, plus the derivative of y with respect to x. We'll differentiate it with respect to y, and you get 1, and that has to be multiplied by the derivative with respect to x. We could write it as dy dx, d over dx, or we could just write it as y prime uh, times the first function times negative 3x. So that's product rule, derivative of the first times the second, plus derivative of the second times the first. And then plus uh, the derivative of 2 is 0. Okay, so I only have one y, y prime here, so I just need to isolate that. Let me just simplify this up a little bit. Uh, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3xy uh, prime. So I want to isolate y prime. I've got 15x squared plus 3y, and then I'll divide the negative 3x over, and then that's the isolation of y, not y squared. Of y prime, sorry. Uh, we could do a bit of simplifying on the left there. Uh, the numerator, I could common factor out uh, a 3, and I'd have 5x squared plus y. I do that because that'll reduce <coughs> with the denominator. So 3 over negative 3 is negative 1. So I can move the negative top or bottom. I've got negative 5x squared plus y over x equals y prime. So uh, that was another implicit differentiation. If we want one more, uh, this one is more complicated because I added some trig functions in here. But notice when I do chain rule with that first derivative of that sine function, the argument has a y in it, so I'm going to have to use implicit differentiation. So uh, I'm going to need product rule, so derivative of the first function times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. So the derivative of 4 sine of 2y would be 4 cos of 2y. But I now need to differ chain rule tell me I now need to differentiate that 2y and multiply this by the derivative of 2y with respect to x. Well, the derivative of 2y with respect to y is 2, and that needs to be multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's the derivative of the first function. And then that needs to be multiplied by the second function, cos x, plus the derivative of the second function, so derivative of cos x is negative sine x, times the first function for sine 2y. And that's equal to the derivative of 2, which is 0. So I now need to isolate my dy dx. So I can just take this term and move it over. It becomes positive. So I've got 4 cos uh, well, actually I don't even need to write 4 I can combine this 2 and the 4 that's 8 8 cos 2y cos x dy over dx so that's just this first term simplified a bit equals then I'll take this term move it over it becomes positive oh actually I'll put that coefficient of 4 at the front so 4 sin x sine 2y and now I'll just isolate the dy over dx. Right now it's a factor of those other terms, so just divide those other terms over. So dy over dx equals 4 sine x sine 2y all over 8 cos 2y cos x. And we should simplify 4 over 8. That's a half. So change it to 1 over 2. And there we go. There's our derivative with respect to x. Okay, I hope you understand implicit differentiation. Make sure you subscribe. Go to jensenmath.ca.